So Samsung has just released two of the best big tablets that are full of features, includes an S Pen, has super AMOLED displays, and can do quite a bit more than your average tablet. But which one should you buy? Let's get started and find out. First thing to get out of the way is neither of these two tablets are what I would call budget friendly, especially at full retail price, which starts at $899 for the Tab S8 Plus, $1099 for the Ultra. But luckily, if you have an older tablet or a phone that you can trade in towards one of these, or if you just have stuff you can sell around the house, it's definitely gonna make it easier to afford one of these if you don't have the spare cash laying around. Obviously, it's gonna depend on which version you get because there's an eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 or 256 gigabytes of storage on the S8 Plus, but you can go up to 12 gigabytes or even 16 gigabytes of RAM with 512 gigabytes of storage on the Ultra version. Yeah, crazy to think you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM on a tablet now. One other thing to consider, you only get one color for the Ultra. Good thing is graphite looks actually really good in person. So unless you have to have silver or pink gold, that shouldn't be an issue. Nice thing is regardless of which tablet you choose, you're gonna get 120 Hertz refresh rate on both tablets. The main difference is gonna be 12.4 inch on the S8 Plus, 14.6 inch on the Ultra. Resolution is pretty similar at 2800 by 1848 on the S8 Plus, 29 60 by 1848 on the Ultra. And I gotta say, if you think the S8 Plus is big, just wait till you try the Ultra. It actually makes the S8 Plus feel like a normal sized tablet. That's something I thought I would never say. You're also gonna get a bigger 11,200 milliamp hour battery on the S8 Ultra versus 1090 milliamp hour on the S8 Plus. But in my battery drain test, I still got about the same seven hour battery life, which is just above average compared to other tablets I've tested. So not bad considering how big these tablets are, but I was sort of hoping they would last a little bit longer. You still should be able to get through an entire day with normal usage, probably a day and a half or two days if you turn the screen brightness down. Probably one of the best new features to me is going to be the 45 watt super fast charging. I mean, it's just what it says. It's super fast. I forgot how much I love fast charging since I haven't used my OnePlus 9 in a while, but wow, it's fast. Just when I was comparing it to my 35 watt charger, the 45 watt was like an hour faster and the battery wasn't even all the way dead. Now, obviously it's gonna depend on which versions you end up getting. I have what's considered the base model for each of these tablets at eight gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. Both tablets have the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. So Geekbench testing is gonna be very similar between these two, but even the base models I have have very good performance and are a nice step up from the previous gen Galaxy tabs. Gaming is also gonna be very similar between the two versions I have, but but one thing to keep in mind is if you're buying these tablets just for gaming, both are sort of hard to reach certain spots on the screen just because it's so large. Obviously, the S8 Plus is gonna be a little bit easier to handle than the Ultra, but if you're connecting a controller to either of the tablets, I don't think that's really gonna matter. But yeah, in my opinion, it's really fun to play games on either of these tablets just because they have such a nice large screen and I haven't had any overheating issues or glitches during my testing of PUBG Mobile, Asphalt 9. Tablets are gonna look nice and sharp, really nice contrast, and both should be able to handle just about anything you throw at them. Both of these tablets are currently on Android 12, One UI 4.1 as of this video. And as you could guess, it's gonna be a very similar software experience. You can use split screen to be a little more productive or even switch to Samsung DeX on both tablets. And it really is getting a lot closer to making it feel like a regular laptop. If you have the official keyboard case from a Tab S7 Plus, nice thing is that's gonna work on the newer Tab S8 Plus as well since they're the same dimensions. And then unlike with iPads, where they make you pay extra for the Apple Pencil, nice thing is you get the S Pen included on both tablets. It's really good for drawing, writing notes, and it's nice to just move around the software using the S Pen. You also get a ton of other features like Air Actions to control the camera app. Then you just snap it right onto the magnet on the back of the tablet to charge it back up. 
Another great feature on both tablets is you get the quad AKG speakers with Dolby Atmos, which sound really nice in person, especially for tablets. Here's a quick sample of each just to give you an idea of what they sound like, but just know that both sound really good and are fairly loud as well. And there isn't gonna be a huge difference between the two. And then if you want a tablet for things like Zoom meetings, Google Duo, whatever video conference app that you're using, these two are gonna be some of the best options out there as far as tablets go. You get a 12 megapixel ultra wide front facing camera on both, and then an extra 12 megapixel front facing on the ultra. And then you get the same dual camera setup on the back with 13 and six megapixels for each. You're also gonna get the new auto framing where if you move around a lot, the camera automatically centers you within the frame. You can turn that on or off on either one. Definitely a nice feature to have on both tablets. I still don't think the cameras on here are quite as good as say flagship phones, but still really good quality for tablets. Here's a quick sample of each just to give you an idea of what to expect. So hopefully this video gave you a little closer look at the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra versus the Tab S8 Plus. I really don't think you can go wrong with either tablet. It might even come down to which screen size you prefer and how much money you're wanting to spend on these. But overall, I think Samsung did a really nice job on both tablets. And yeah, it's pretty easy to say these are definitely two of my favorite tablets that I've used on the channel so far. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Uh,